All right, hello everybody, and today I want to showcase my little Epicycles project I did here on Desmos. So this was in fact inspired by 3 Blue Modern Brown's 4A series animations he did on his YouTube channel. Uh, so yeah, I decided to recreate this a little bit on Desmos, um, of course to a much more limited extent. But uh, yeah, here it is, actually quite happy with how it turns out. So uh, yeah, let's just jump straight into it and see how this thing works. So right off the bat, we actually only have five circles right here. So actually limited to the amount of detail we can draw with this thing. Um, of course, if you have like a chain of a hundred circles, then you can draw a lot more intricate things with it. But uh, yeah, it's just not practical on Desmos right here. It will just take way too long to put in all the equations and everything. And my computer will probably blow up running it. So yeah, side five circles was plenty. Um, but uh, yeah, so all epicycles are, they're just circles that kind of spin around to other circles at different frequencies. And depending on all those frequencies, amplitude and everything, we can produce different shapes with it. And the thing that produces a shape is actually this final point right here, this red point. And you can kind of think about it as like a little pencil. And it's going to draw out, well, whatever this thing decides to draw out. So... With all of that out of the way, we can take a look at the equations panel right here. So we have the main controls first of all. So we have A, B, and U. So A and B, they're just, well, the endpoints. Well, so it's just where it starts and where this thing ends. And I've just set the endpoint to 2 pi by default. Um, so we have the U right here. And this U is kind of like the thing that controls this whole thing. Uh, it's kind of like the time. So this, everything you see right here, it's all parameterized by this U right here. Um, so yeah, everything's controlled by this U. Um, so yeah. So underneath that, we have three folders right here. We have the frequency, we have the amplitude, and we have the phase. So let's actually start off with the amplitude. So the amplitude, that's quite self-explanatory. It's how big each circle is. So we have like A1, which controls the first circle, A2, which controls the second circle, and so on. And we can change change the amplitude according to whatever we want. And the nice thing is, um, each of these points right here on our circles, we can actually move them around as movable points. And we can directly change the amplitude um, from moving the points around instead of going to this um, folder right here. So that's a nice sort of thing. Um, so after amplitude, let's actually go to frequency. Uh, frequency, well, that's just how fast each circle spins around the previous circle. So we have F1 right here. So F1 um, is how fast this second circle right here spins around the first circle. Um, and of course, if you go to the negative numbers, then, um, well, it's going to spin clockwise, which is the opposite direction. So yeah, that's our frequency. So right now, I have everything set at once. So if we play this thing right here, Everything's going to draw a nice circle um, in unison. So we have a, pretty much a straight line that draws a circle all the way around. Pretty boring, not too much happening, but uh, you will spice things up um, after we get through all of this stuff. So after those two, we have the phase. And the phase, well, that's just where our point starts at time equals zero or u equals zero. So yeah, we can control where each of these um, circles start off, their po initial position and all that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty pretty nice, and uh, yeah, those are pretty much all the controls. You only need phase, amplitude, frequency, and all these um, endpoints and stuff right here. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I guess I'll just go through the graphics a little bit. So the graphics were quite a headache to work out actually, but uh, finally got it in the end. So we have the circles right here, and um, these equations look really quite complicated, but they're really not. Um, pretty much we have our starting circle right here, so basic circle equation, and uh, all of these um, subsequent um, equations right here, uh, those are just, well, the original circle that's been translated up and down, and those actually all depend if you have a close look, we have the A, which is the amplitude, the F, which is the frequency, and the K, which is the phase. So it's all dependent on um, the settings we have um, on these controls right here. So that's pretty much all the circles. So as you, you can see, like as each circle 
progresses, the equations get bigger because we need to account for more, um, more translations and everything. But uh, yeah, those are all the circles. Uh, next up, we have the points. So the points, well, those are just the points right here you can move around. We have the starting one at 0, 0, so nothing too special there. And uh, we have all these um, other points right here that follow, and again, those are just um, basic translations. Um, it's actually the same, they're actually the midpoints of each of these circles right here, so they were pretty straightforward to work out. Um, so yeah, that's just translations of this original zero zero point right here. Um, so now we go into the race, and the rays were probably the toughest part to work out because as you can see, they are actually just individual line segments right here. They're the blue lines, so they're the individual line segments that kind of connect these um, points together. And the rays, um, we actually have four equations for each ray because we have to control, first of all, the domain of each one. We have to control um, the positive half of it and the negative half of it at the same time. And then if you watched my clock video on Desmos, you'll realize that at specific times when this um, line here is vertical, it won't show because the gradient is undefined. So I had to compensate for that somehow by kind of reversing these X's and Y's around. Um, so yeah, rays were quite a nightmare to work out, especially these um, these domains right here. So this is the first ray, which is the first circle down here. So it wasn't too much of a nightmare to work out. And when you get to this final circle right here, then the equations are just monstrous because um, you have to count for all the translations that happens um, for the previous circles and the domain is just um, a nightmare to figure out how to put that in. So uh, yeah, took quite a bit of effort, especially because it's five circles and I had to um, write quite a bit of equations and all that. Um, even though most of it was copy paste, but um, yeah. So there you go, those are the rays. Um, I guess the final bit of graphics to go over is the path. So the path right here, this red line right here, that's prime trace line, that's just, um, well, this red line you see, that's being traced out by this red dot. Um, we also have this other thing right here, where you can view like the whole entire path. And we can have like the red circle that's tracing around that dotted line. So yeah, it's this little nice feature I included in there. And uh, yeah, this is just the um, parametrized um, equation. And it's based off of this very final point right here. So you can actually graph parametric equations on Desmos if you use this T variable right here. That's why I didn't use a T up here. Uh, because things wouldn't really work out how I would want them to work out. So, yeah, I used T down here to um, control the parametric equation, then, of course, to control the red line. We just set a simple domain, and that domain is based off of this A and B right here, this U as well. So, yeah, those are pretty much all the graphics um, to go over. And uh, now I guess what we can do now is finally start mucking around with this thing. I'm um, showing you kind of like all the cool stuff you can make with it. So, first of all, we just need to go to these three folders right here. Those are the three folders that control pretty much everything. So, let's control the frequency first of all. If we change the frequency around, you can see that it kind of makes weird shapes. So, we have um, whatever shape that is. I forgot what it's called. Um, and you can control the frequencies of all these things right here. And you get like really weird shapes out of it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. A nice thing I figured out is that if you set all of these to integer values, so if you set all of these frequencies to be perfect integers, then what will actually happen is that the endpoint and the start points will line up with each other. So if I set this to two, you can or one, you can kind of see that the endpoints line up right here. So if it's off by a little bit, then it's going to be disconnected. But if they're the same thing, then it's going to line up nicely. So that's how you can have like nice periodic motion happening. So we've messed around the frequency. If we mess around with the amplitude a little bit, we can change even more things. So we can change like how big things get and all that. And you can of course change it directly by moving around these sliders right here, or these points. Um, so that's pretty cool. 
so you can make even more weird shapes and of course you have the phase right here which kind of controls um, I guess how rotatey these things are because it kind of controls where these um, circles start so I guess it can kind of think about it as rotation kind of not really all the time but uh, yeah you can do a lot with these controls right here so um, actually let's just mess around with this little bit and let's get a nice shape going I don't know, maybe that's good enough. So if we have that, and we go all the way back up to the start, we can play our U out a little bit, and as you can see, it traces out every thing, every single thing on this uh, path right here. Of course, it's a little bit laggy. Uh, that's because I'm recording right now. Um, usually, it can run quite smoothly. I think if I disable the circle, it will run more smoothly. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah. This thing's just tracing out this whole path right here. We can disable the path if we want to and just have it draw out the line itself, the parametric line. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it actually. That's all I kind of wanted to show you guys. Um, I guess another thing I wanted to showcase is this little star thing I made using this um, EpiCycles project right here. Um, so I was just mucking around with it and I figured out kind of like the correct frequencies and amplitudes and everything that makes this thing work and it turned out quite nicely actually so if we let this thing play a little bit uh, just make it faster I guess you can see it draws out a nice star shape uh, which is quite cool so uh, yeah that is pretty much all I wanted to show you guys so if you want to mess around with this project a little bit, a link to the project will be in the video description um, if you want to mess around with it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything I really wanted to show you guys. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see everyone next time. <laughs>